Thank you, Mr. Record. Uh, Mr. O'Neill is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick footnote. The, the issue of uh, intellectual property has lingered here for a long time, as we've witnessed this growing relationship between the United States and India. But it's a very stubborn problem. But I want to take you to another question that's more specific with a specific company located in New England, Takeo. They have asked that, because we were holding this hearing, that I raise this issue specifically on their behalf. This is an American company that is moving part of their manufacturing business to India from China. Now, you would think that that would be a good thing for India. However, India has made the move so difficult that the company is now beginning to regret the decision. For example, Takeo has sent some samples of their finished products to Indian vendors who will be manufacturing their products, and Takeo ran into major problems with Indian customs including long holds on samples and arbitrary duties and fees. With a workforce of 500 million people, which is slated to grow over these next 25 years, India is grasping at any means to generate manufacturing employment. And we have seen and witnessed some forced localization measures. Here is an instance where an American manufacturer is trying to create manufacturing jobs in India and India is making it very difficult for them to do so. As witnesses, is there any one of you who wishes to speak specifically to this question? And I would note that TACO is headquartered in Cranston, Rhode Island. Sir, so I can make a, just a general point, um, which is that the one reason the U.S. and India had a very fraught relationship really throughout the Cold War was not simply because of Cold War divisions, but because India socialized most of its economic base when it became independent after the British colonial period. And I mean, I think most of us are pretty progressive and we're used to thinking about India as this dynamic market, a billion plus people, one of the world's biggest economies down the road. But in fact, you still have a government whose tentacles are everywhere in the economy. And it's one reason why the Indian private sector, quite interestingly, they're so fed up with the regulatory mess in India that many of them are actually going abroad. It's actually much easier and more rewarding for many Indian companies to invest in Europe or the United States uh, than it is in their own country. And so we don't have an Indian private sector representative here at the dais, but if we did, I suspect he would say, gosh, we have this kind of problem ourselves and it drives us nuts. But from a 10, 20 year perspective, the Indian government has been in the process of stepping back from the economy, but it's still far too heavily involved in it. And that's something that we think, again, I think there's a consensus that a big push on trade liberalization between our countries would help to extract the Indian state in ways that would really benefit the Indian people through greater economic growth. But the difficulty with that point is that as we pursue free trade agreements and breaking down barriers uh, to trade, one of the items I think that could fairly be ascribed to governments in China or in India is that they are for free trade on their terms. I think that that's a, that's a fair point, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Neil. But, but I, th I think uh, the other side, the way this could, this could possibly work, the big push that we're talking about is because trade is a two-way street. I mean, for example, just as localization and others, uh, IP issues are raising concerns, uh, I think the uh, Indi Indian government also has uh, you know, issues of concern in the US, which you know, a kind of big push would allow this kind of trade-off to be made. Uh, to give one example, uh, the H-1B visa issue, the, the immigration issue, you know, uh, uh, export licensing, for example, uh, that's another issue. Uh, totalization in social security agreements, that's another issue. So, so, so I think the important thing here is how can we create a framework so that more of these exchanges can take place and it doesn't just become you know, U.S. business complaining about uh, uh, problems in India, which no doubt exist, but creating a more positive two-way dynamic to put the kind of create the incentives that Mr. Twinning talked about also for India to change some of these policies. Um, uh, I think, it, I think it's, it's possible here, at least in the discussion of, of technology and intellectual property, to create win-win situations. I think you want to be able to convince the Indian government that this is not a zero-sum game. This is about uh, creating an environment for innovation, and India has the resources technically to advance very far in, in, in terms of, of, of creating new innovative technologies, yet it seems to be going 
towards a very short term view of, 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 of what's, what's going on. But I think, I think we can play a very strong role in at least advocating, look, the long term and the future here of prosperity is, is, is with advancing uh, a win-win situation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Neal.